Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning on GMSA, Congress left with just two weeks to try to avoid a possible economic disaster. What they're doing about the debt ceiling and why plans have hit a roadblock overnight. Back here at home, San Antonio police are investigating a shooting at an apartment pool on the city's far northwest side. What we've learned about the suspect is a man who was shot seven times. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, you can still see the water on the live cam, a light show to start your weekend. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey, see when the rain will go away. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Saturday, May 20th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. I got to say, I could not sleep through the night because I of the thunder, not. the lightning. This seems like, you know, it's becoming a thing every you know, every couple of days. Uh, but before we get to weather in just a moment, because we're hearing you know, all those like the thunder, the mm -hmm. lightning, uh, we have some power outages specifically in the southwest side and the west side of town. That's right. So if you are without power, if you're watching us on your phone or your iPad, you're not alone. Taking a look at CPS outage map right now. Oof, a little bit more than 2,200 customers affected. Still a lot better than what we saw the last storm that rolled through. Remember the last one, we peaked at about 14,000 customers without power. So we're going to stay on top of this. If more outages do pop up, we will keep you posted. But Sarah Spivey, is the storm going to make it through the morning? You know, most of the, the storminess is actually moving out of San Antonio as we speak, and it's going to end up being a pretty nice day here in San Antonio. But take a look at the radar right now. I do want to bring your attention to the showers that are leaving San Antonio, but just because rain is leaving doesn't mean there's not flooding. In fact, there are flash flood warnings in effect for parts of Medina, Frio, Atascosa County until 7 o'clock this morning because 4 to 6 inches of rain fell in this area overnight. That is a lot of rain in a short period of time, and we've got to allow some time for all of that rainwater to uh, drain into creeks and rivers and those kinds of things. So if you are inside of this green polygon here in Medina, Frio County, and Atascosa County, that includes Lytle, make sure to uh, avoid any kind of flooded roadways. Turn around, don't drown. As for uh, the rest of, of our morning here, for us around San Antonio. You can see that just a few showers are pushing eastward through the downtown area toward Shirt, Seguin, Elmendorf, Floresville, dealing with some rain too. The most intense part of this storm is working its way uh, through Live Oak right now uh, near three cities, uh, three rivers rather, and George West. Plenty of lightning there with that storm as it's pushing east into Bee County and eventually into Goliad. That's where the most intense part of the storm is right now. However, again, things are starting to calm down around San Antonio. There's still a few flashes of lightning. As you look out at the roads, please use caution. This is 410 at Marbach. Lots of ponding on the roads, as you can see right now, uh, around the city of San Antonio through our trans guide. So for the rest of the day, here's a look at your storm chances highest right now and we'll really only see a couple of isolated showers in the afternoon. It's going to end up being a nice Saturday and a lot cooler than yesterday. Yesterday we got up to 90 degrees today, 80 for the high. So yeah, not necessarily cool, but not really too warm either. A pretty nice day for us today. Tomorrow, Sunday, we're going to start again with some light rain in the morning tomorrow. Not as intense as what we saw in the overnight hours and you shouldn't be woken up by thunder and lightning over night tonight into tomorrow, but I will talk about how uh, that morning light rain will be around and again a pretty nice day tomorrow too after we get through that morning light rain high of only 81 details on that and a look ahead to the week. It's going to be hot and humid coming up. Thank you, Sarah, a lot happening overnight here in the Alamo City. San Antonio police still searching for a suspect who's responsible for shooting two people overnight. All of this unfolding in an apartment complex on the northwest side. Alyssa Cole joins us live from the newsroom with the latest. Good morning, Alyssa. So how are the victims doing this morning? Yes, good morning, you all. Both victims, they are have been sent to the hospital for medical treatment, and one was treated at the scene. This is what we know. This all happened just before. 
happen at an apartment complex called Legacy Flats Apartments. That's on Shanefield near Loop 1604. Police tell us the group was hanging out. A man ran up firing several shots towards the group. Two people were hit. One man in his 20s. He was hit seven times, you all. Another man, he was grazed on the leg. The victim that was grazed on the leg, EMS tell us they were treated there at the scene. But of course, that victim that was shot seven times was taken to University Hospital. And at last check, we know that they are in critical condition. So physicians are keeping a watch on that victim. Now, we are told that the suspect did run away. They got away on foot. There's no documentation or any record of a vehicle. If you have any information, you're encouraged to call Crime Stoppers. That information is on our website at ksat.com. But for now, I'll send it back to you all. Thank you, Alyssa. Also new this morning, San Antonio police say a woman was taken to the hospital after an overnight crash. It happened just after 930 last night on the Loop 410 entrance ramp near North Van Diver Road. That's on the city's north side near Harry Warsbach. SAPD says the driver in her 20s couldn't decide whether or not to get on the highway. She hit the ramp barrier and spun around, hitting an SUV head on. She was taken to Bamsey with minor injuries and will be tested for a possible DWI at the hospital. The other driver wasn't hurt. Top of your morning headlines, new developments in the debt limit showdown negotiations Paused on and off throughout yesterday. They finally ended last night and to no surprise, still no deal on Capitol Hill. And as ABC's Chuck Severston reports, time is running out fast to reach an agreement. It could be a busy weekend for lawmakers in Washington trying to come to an agreement on raising the debt limit. After talks stalled Friday afternoon, negotiators for the GOP and the White House met again for about 90 minutes Friday night, but say they ended the closed door meeting with no progress and no set plans for the next meeting. At the uh, direction of the Speaker of the House, we, um, we re-engaged, um, had a very, very candid discussion uh, talking about um, where we are talking about um, where things need to be, what's reasonable and acceptable. Congress must raise the debt ceiling to pay the nation's existing bills, money that's already been spent. Two sources familiar with the talks tell ABC News a key sticking point, significant cuts to federal spending. As the president receives updates while he's away at the G7 summit in Japan, the White House saying Friday night they are confident an agreement will be made. We are indeed optimistic. We think and we believe uh, that there is a path forward. And so uh, we're going to give them, uh, the negotiators, some time and some space to do that. The president's going to continue to stay uh, abreast and certainly uh, stay very focused on, on, the, on, on, this, uh, on the negotiations as we move forward. The U.S. facing default for the first time in history come June 1st. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy warning an agreement has to be made by Sunday for Congress to have enough time to pass the bill. The consequences could be dire if they miss the deadline. Troops could go unpaid. Social Security payments could be delayed for seniors. Stock markets would likely plunge along with people's 401ks. Interest rates would soar and nearly 8 million people could lose their jobs. The president is due to return to the White House Sunday. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News, New York. In other headlines, a man accused of leaking classified Pentagon documents will remain in federal custody before his trial. Air National Guardsman Jack Texera appeared in court in Massachusetts with his family, hoping a judge would grant him pretrial release. During his court appearance Friday, a judge agreed with federal prosecutors that he's a flight risk. And if released, the young man could be swayed to release sensitive information to the nation's enemies. The judge said a, a list of people Texera put at risk was as long as a phone book. So as leaders of the seven world's most powerful democracies gather in Japan for the G7 summit, it's really going to be the authoritarian powers of China and Russia that dominate the conversation. The annual G7 convening this year in Hiroshima, Japan, it'll seek to project a unified response to an increasingly assertive China and the perceived threat that it poses to stability and economic security of the world. This security already shaken by Russia's ongoing war with Ukraine. Another big theme that we expect to hear from the summit, economic security, including how to counter China's economic pressure tactics throughout the world. Time now, 6.09, 67 degrees out. Hey, guess what? Mm. It's National Barbecue Month. So it was National Barbecue Day this past week, and they brought in barbecue, so shouts to SA Live. Nice. I, mean, uh, I was not here, though. It's not a bad month. It's National oh. Barbecue Month. And David Elder checking out some of the best bites around town to celebrate.
And after the break, Target recalling nearly 5 million candles. Oh my goodness, we're going to look at which ones and why. You know, Max is a big candle guy. You know, I used to be, and I did some research. Not as great as you think they'd be. <laughs> kind of scary, to be honest. Not great. The, the rain outside, Sarah Spivey's going to be tracking that throughout the morning for us when we come back. This morning, Target is recalling nearly 5 million candles that could cut people when broken. So they come in a glass jar and carry the brand name Threshold. So far, Target has received more than 100 reports saying they easily break or crack open. This has led to at least six injuries of causing cuts and severe burns. So if you have any of these candles, you should return them for a refund. All right, turning to the weather, we see Sarah Spivey joining us. Hi. I see the shoulder. Hey, Sarah. There we go. All right, so light show overnight. It yeah. was bright. It was loud. Are we going to see this through the day? Uh, no. You know, overnight we had the thunderstorms, but the thing is, is that really the heaviest of the rain is moving out of the area. Okay. And it's actually going to be a cooler Saturday, you know. Nice. Not really too worried about any major rain during the day. But take a look at some of these pictures and videos sent in through our KSAC Connect feature overnight. This video is very impressive of uh, the thunderstorms off in the distance. Watch as the lightning starts to come there and then watch this one. It's really beautiful. You can see the structure of the storm there off in the distance. So thank you so much. A lot of lightning videos. I hope to show some more throughout the remainder of uh, the newscast here. But as you take a look at the current setup, the heaviest of the rain is moving out of San Antonio right now. You can see that uh, light, moderate rain still falling on the east side of town, but generally things are calming down. Uh, there are still a few flashes of lightning off in the distance, but rain just now starting to end in downtown San Antonio. Still some moderate rain near Floresville, Elmendorf, Pleasanton. And of course, we do still have a flash flood warning in effect until 7 a.m. for parts of uh, Medina, Frio, and Atascosa County. And here is the reason why. Let's take a look at the uh, rainfall here since about midnight. Uh, well, 12 hour rainfall uh, in San Antonio, but it really started raining around uh, midnight. But look at this one bullseye area between Hondo and Yancey. Take a look at this. Six inches of radar estimated rain in a matter of a few hours. Elsewhere uh, nearer to Lytle, we saw about four inches of radar estimated rainfall, nearly five in northern Atascosa County. As for San Antonio, you know, anywhere you see these yellows, that's about two to three inches of rain. So in parts of Wilson County to the west of Floresville, two to three inches of rain, two to three inches of rain along I-10 here into Guadalupe County. And then around San Antonio, the main areas that saw a lot of rain overnight, John Jay High School, Lackland Air Force Base area, JBSA Lackland near Taft High School. Uh, some of these streets, we can actually get down into a street view. Culebra there just past 1604 and uh, these neighborhoods neighborhoods. Uh, here you got Sierra Trail. Those neighborhoods really close into that da that uh, view there of a neighborhood view. You can see on the west side and northwest side about three and two to three inches of rain. But around San Antonio, about an inch at the airport, a little bit more than a quarter. So the airport was one of the areas that kind of messed missed out on the rainfall in a big way, but still got some good rain overnight. So as you look at the KSAT 12 hour forecast, highest rain chances is early this morning. The next couple of hours, it's going to stay pretty cloudy until about noon. Then we're going to see peaks of sunshine, high temperature near 80 degrees today. So quite a bit cooler with a northeast wind at 5 to 15 miles per hour. All because of a cold front that moved through 80 for the high uh, today and a 20% chance in the afternoon for a few thunder showers. Most of us are not going to see any more rain after this morning though. So it go out and enjoy your uh, day. 80 for the high around San Antonio, upper 70s up in the hill country, 81 in Del Rio, 84 in Catula, and 85 in Beeville. Our average high this time of year is 88, so we are going to be cooler than average. Here's a look across Texas. This complex is going to be pushing east, so if you have to travel to Houston or know people who are traveling to Houston today, make sure to advise them that the rain will still maintain out toward Houston, but behind that front, cooler air moving in. We're not going 
going to get down into the 40s and 30s like they are across the central plains, but we are going to still be looking at temperatures near 80 degrees tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, here's a look at the future cast for tonight. Some storms out west will develop and then a few light rain showers are possible around San Antonio early tomorrow morning. So as you're heading out to church or going to the grocery store early on Sunday, know that there will be some light rain, but a lot like today, we're going to see skies clear somewhat in the afternoon. So after that morning shower, those morning showers, it's going to end up being a pretty nice day during the day on Sunday. Looking ahead, it's going to be warm and humid in the week. A lot more sunshine drying out quite a bit, so not as much of the chance for rain that we've been seeing the last couple of weeks. Next week, highs near 90 degrees. Mm. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say something. Hey, by the way, I'm going to have a look. I'm pivoting. By the way, I'm going to have a look at how much this rain has helped out the aquifer Good. coming up. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Mm. 618, 67 degrees out. Still ahead, one more 630. Oh my gosh, the live action version of The Little Mermaid. Almost here, what the stars of the film are saying about bringing the animated classic to life. All right, we have movies and we have barbecue. Just ahead, David Elder searching for the best barbecue in and around our community, celebrating National Barbecue Month. What he found, that's next. We have our ribs, just simple salt and pepper, and then I just make a little glaze for it because I like I like my ribs to be a little sweet. So we make our sausage in-house. This is our pork serrano Oaxaca cheese sausage. It's not too spicy and it's nice and cheesy. Our brisket, of, of course, we used to use prime brisket in the beginning and now we uh, we are actually uh, ambassadors with Hard Brand. So we use uh, Akashi brisket. Of course, our turkey breast, homemade, homemade uh, pickles, our macaroni, and our uh, beets. Grab a, a rib with me. For sure. Cheers to you. Cheers, Pork man. rib Pork out rib. here at 2M. Gonna give it a try. Oh wow. If you love ribs, these are the ones to try. When you come out here, these pork ribs have a nice sweetness on the outside, slight smokiness on there as well, but super savory. And you give them a little tug right off the bone and they come right off. It's just the way ribs are supposed to be. All right, what is your go-to, not your go-to barbecue spot, because we don't want to put it anyone, yeah. uh, but go-to order? I think, well, besides burnt ends, Ooh, okay. I think number two is ribs. Okay. Yeah. Sarah Spivey? Expecting that. Way to go, Sarah. I know. I'm, I'm a turkey gal. <laughs> okay. You're a what? Turkey. turkey. Okay. Oh, I don't, I'm not a turkey gal. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 623, 67 degrees. Okay, the live action version of The Little Mermaid will splash in the theaters next weekend. We have a preview from Ariel herself in your morning spotlight. I will be. Are. Halle Bailey is Ariel for a whole new generation. Playing the title role in The Little Mermaid for director Rob Marshall has been one amazing experience for this rising star and for her Prince Eric, played by Jonah Hauer King. The first time that you saw what he envisioned, tell me what you thought. Rob is very grand and loves drama and loves just the a beautiful big production of things. And we walked into the most beautiful presentation we'd ever seen in our lives. It literally felt like a ride out of Disneyland. Why don't you kiss the girl? I mean, it was just like, wow, we were like, this is what it's gonna look like? Just so magical. And then it's one thing to see the vision that somebody has before, and then to see it after, when it's all put together, and it's just <coughs> honestly mind-blowing. How many wires were on the set on a given day? How often were you attached to something? It was a job of wires, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, uh, I mean, Ali had to do so much on, on the blue screen stage. I was doing a lot up on that ship, uh, which I was very grateful for, actually, because I'm afraid of heights, and I was going way up there. So <laughs> I was kept, kept checking those wires, yeah. make sure I was not going to fall off. <laughs> the roles were physically challenging for both stars. It's exercise every day. Oh yeah, that that girl was in great shape. She's no longer here. <laughs> <laughs>
The Little Mermaid officially opens May 26th. In Los Angeles, George Pinocchio for ABC News. Good morning and welcome back. So we have been keeping an eye on the storm and of course the power outages through CPS right now. Taking a look, 760 total customers affected for the CPS outage map. Remember, we started the morning with a little more than 2,200. So it looks like CPS is out and about making those changes, making the fixes. And the big story of the morning so far, that light show that been happening overnight. The lightning, the thunder happening starting around, I know, 2.30 in my area, but much earlier, according to Sarah Spivey, in other areas of our viewing area. Absolutely. Right around midnight is when we started to see some showers and storms moving through San Antonio, and it was on and off throughout the overnight hours. So I hope you were able to rest a little bit. Those storms... The bark was a little worse than the bite, really, in many areas. So taking a look at uh, some of the roadways, you can see that there's still quite a bit of ponding there on the road. So just be careful as you're heading out and about. The rain itself is exiting San Antonio, but we're still seeing some moderate rain for areas in eastern Bear County, from Schertz all the way down 1604 toward Elmendorf and into Floresville, as well as Poth and Falls City. Some light rain for Seguin and Gonzalez, the heaviest of the storms moving through Live Oak right now. And as we take a look out to the west, I do want to mention that there is still a flash flood warning for areas in Medina, uh, Frio, and Atascosa County. This is the area that got four to six inches of rain. And so there's a flash flood warning there until 7 o'clock this morning, just for the next 30 minutes or so as the roads dry out. As we take a look to the west here, I'm going to turn on the radar that's closer to these showers and storms out near Brackettville and Del Rio. They're fairly isolated, but we're going to watch and see if they can hold on as they move off to the east. The biggest thing to keep in mind, though, is that once this rain leaves, that's the main show. You can go out and enjoy your day. Just keep an eye on the radar because there is a small chance 20% for an isolated shower storm this afternoon. Otherwise, it's going to be mostly cloudy and a lot cooler because of a cool front that moved through high of only 80 degrees in comparison to 90 yesterday. It's going to feel a lot better outside. Now coming up in the forecast, we've got another opportunity for rain over the weekend. But again, I think the timing is going to be pretty nice for those looking to spend some time outdoors. Details coming up. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. We're happening overnight on San Antonio's northwest side. Two men were shot in an apartment complex, and police say the suspect shot one man seven times before getting away. Alyssa Cole has been on top of this story, joining us live from the newsroom. So, Alyssa, what do we know so far? Yes, good morning. Well, this is what we know. We know this happened on the city's northwest side. It happened on Shanefield near 1604, all before 1 o'clock. Max Sarah, take a look at this video. Police tell us there was a group of men hanging out at the apartment complex, Legacy Flat Apartments, when another man, you know, just ran up firing several shots towards the group. Here's what we know. Two people were shot. One man in his 20s, he was hit seven times. Another person person was grazed in the leg. Now, authorities tell us the person grazed in the leg was, of course, treated there at the scene with EMS paramedics. The other person, that man that was shot seven times, he was taken to University Hospital. And at last check, we're told that he's in critical condition. Now, Police tell us the suspect did get away uh, on foot. There is no uh, documentation or any record of that suspect getting into a vehicle. But again, this did all happen just before one o'clock this morning. Of course, detectives are asking anyone who may have any information regarded to this incident to give them a call. All the information you need for Crime Stoppers is on our website at ksat.com. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Alyssa. A 19 year old man involved in an hours long standoff with San Antonio police surrendered overnight. So right now the man has not been identified. SAPD was called to the area near Westfield and West Oak Roads on the west side for an assault on Friday afternoon. Police say he held his young children in the home before releasing one of them. Family members told police the man had assaulted allegedly his mother and then barricaded himself inside the home with his nine month old and one year old child while armed with two knives. The children are safe and unharmed. Meanwhile, San Antonio police tell us a driver accused of killing a teenager in a hit and run crash. The suspect now in custody. Take a look. 46 year old Greg Gonzalez arrested just yesterday. 
now facing charges of failure to stop and render aid, resulting in death. His charges stem from a crash that happened 1030 Sunday night on Calabro Road, not too far from St. Mary's University. That's where police say 16 year old Draven Espinoza crossing the street when he was hit by a suburban driven allegedly by Gonzalez. We spoke with family and friends of the victim. While their happy and arrest has finally been made, they believe there are more people who should be held accountable. It shouldn't only be him getting incarcerated. It should be everybody else that was in that vehicle because they knew that they hit somebody, but it wasn't just a somebody, it was a kid. He just turned 16, he just had his birthday. Now you've taken his life away. Not only the driver, but the other people in the vehicle. You should have stopped and said something. Family and friends of the victim holding a plate sale this weekend, raising money for funeral costs. We have all that information posted for you right now. Just head to KSAT.com. It's National Bike Month, and Friday was National Bike to Work Day. It's a time where many people should be encouraged to hit the road on two wheels, but instead a troubling trend has cycling advocates asking for more protection on the roads. In the past 22 days, there have been at least six hit and runs, and five were deadly. The lone survivor is currently in critical condition. All victims were either on a bike or walking. So Activate SA Executive Director Joey Pollack tells us with the city growing in population and more vehicles on the road, he'd like to see more done for people on bikes. We're sorry about that. We have emailed the San Antonio police to get stats on how many motor vehicle pedestrian and cyclist crashes we've had this year and how that compares to last year. They told us they're working on it and as soon as we get it, we'll share it with you. All right, well, big change to blood donations. After decades of strict requirements, gay and bisexual men will now have the opportunity to donate blood. So big change that we've been waiting for years in the making. Now. The new FDA ruling will remove the abstinence requirement and ask all donors about their sexual history. The old rules stem from the HIV AIDS epidemic back in the 1980s. Remember, back in the 80s, there was very little known about AIDS or HIV, and experts believe it created a negative stigma around the LGBTQ community. Audrey Taylor with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center hopes these new FDA guidelines will bring in a lot more donors. The same questions will be asked to all donors, uh, regardless of gender or sexual affiliation. So it's more of an individual risk more than a targeted risk at a certain group of, of potential donors. And donors will see changes to the questionnaire sheet by this fall. Happening today, if you like the Hanon Conjunto music, this weekend is your chance to attend the largest Conjunto music festival in the world. The 41st annual Tejano Conjunto Festival goes through Sunday at Rosedale Park. The founder of the festival says over 30 bands will take the stage. He says everyone should experience what Conjunto is all about and how it continues to evolve. We want to keep this musical tradition alive, to preserve it, to promote it, to pass it on to the future generations. Love that accordion. Students from San Antonio Rio Grande Valley will also perform. Tickets start at $20. Of course, we have more information right now on KSAT.com. Time is 640, 67 degrees now. Still ahead on GMSA, Max. All right, we have playoffs. Baseball, softball players continue across area. All the action on the diamond, that's coming up. And up next, a city-sponsored spay and neuter clinic is reopening on the south side. Why it was closed in the first place and how it's helping pet owners. Let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. Oh, that is gorgeous. Beautiful. Look at that, some cotton candy sunrise in the distance. It has been quite a light show to start the morning. We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast in just a few moments. Robb Elementary School has a long and significant history here in Uvalde, long before the tragedy of nearly a year ago. It was a contest uh, at the time that the school was being built as to for whom it should be named. The school issue came up, we took advantage of that. My best friend was out there walking and I did not know why. I did not understand. People are still coming from everywhere. Those stories and those memories in KSAT Explains, Monday at 6. 
Welcome back. A city-sponsored spay and neuter clinic is reopening on the city's south side. So it comes after the city council approved a new agreement for the operation of the Brooks City-based facility. Garrett Berenger tells us why it was empty in the first place. An empty building. They could soon be full again with pets in for spay and neuter surgeries. Yeah, roughly 50 a day. Though the Brooks City-based clinic is controlled by the city, along with another site at the zoo, Animal Care Services has nonprofit partners actually operate them. The Brooks Spay and Neuter Clinic used to be run by the Humane Society, but as you can tell, it's been closed a while now. The San Antonio Humane Society ceased operations out of Brooks on February 1st. But even before then, ACS says the nonprofit had reduced operations for much of last year. So they were reducing from several days a week to down to one or two or three days a week. They were just not performing as many surgeries. They were trying to refocus their staff at their clinic. I believe it's on the north side um, to consolidate. A Humane Society spokeswoman said staffing was a global issue, not just with them. And it was separate from what she said was their desire to focus efforts on their medical building at their main campus on Fredericksburg. In any case, the south side was down a clinic. And that really impacted the community's ability to get their pet spayed or neutered. The new operator will be the Spay Neuter Assistance Program, or SNAP. JCS says we'll reopen the clinic sometime this summer with a target of 6,500 low or no cost surgeries per year. So it's going to be a phased opening because they still have to hire staff and ramp up their operations. We'll make sure we do something um, big for the south side. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. All right, turn to weather. 646, 67 degrees. Has the rain mm. stopped yet? It's starting to stop. Okay, I like it's starting that. to stop. <laughs> and is uh, this going to be drought busting? You know what? It definitely, the rounds of rain have really helped to trim back the drought. You know, the extreme and exceptional drought, not as widespread. And the aquifer has really been loving this rain. In fact, this is a look at the aquifer again in the reds and the purple. That's where the rain needs to fall in order to go into the aquifer. The contributing in the recharge zones and take a look at the last seven days. We've been able to see a lot of rain falling on that aquifer. In fact, it, the aquifer is up 12 and a half feet since mid April, and this is just rain in the last seven days. It's even more impressive when you look at the rainfall since the start of the year. Here's a look at the radar right now, and you can see that the rain is moving out of San Antonio. In fact, the only thing that remains around the Alamo City are some light rain showers for the west side of Bear County and out towards Seguin, Lavernia, and Stockdale. Floresville still getting some moderate rainfall. The lightning has really come to an end in a lot of these cases. Just a few flashes of lightning here and there. Even the storm that was uh, really robust uh, in Live Oak County is starting to die down right now as we talk as we speak. So as we look a little bit to the west though just have to remind you there's still some uh, runoff from a lot of rain that fell in areas near Hondo, Divine, Lytle, take a look at the rainfall uh, that fell since midnight around this area. In this pocket of purple here, that is five inches of rainfall that has fallen between Hondo and Yancey. Lytle got about four inches of rain, and there definitely were a lot of folks around San Antonio that saw more than an inch of rain. Anywhere you see this dark green, that's an inch or more. Uh, you can see that that was the case for downtown San Antonio West downtown San Antonio near Alamo Heights and Almost Park. But the real winners were from John Jay High School down to JBSA Lackland, JFK High School, John F. Kennedy High School, and then up toward Taft High School. I'm showing you the high schools because those are good landmarks for you. Uh, else for the airport, 31 hundredths of an inch of rain fell overnight, so not a ton, but definitely something that's going to help. And you can see in Wilson County near Atascosa County and Pleasanton too, about two inches of rain. Let's go ahead and switch to the radar that's closer to Del Rio because I want to show you that there are some thunderstorms that have redeveloped out in Kenny County, but the atmosphere is so worked over that these are likely going to fall apart before they make it to San Antonio. So for the remainder of the day, we have about a 20% chance for isolated showers. 
Let's take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast staying fairly cloudy uh, until the mid morning hours right around noon will be at 77 only 80 for the high today and again a stray shower is possible in the afternoon but it should be a great day to go outside enjoy the weekend uh, again not as hot as it is usually on average high of 88 so 80 for the high in San Antonio even the upper 70s in the hill country 82 in Poteet 82 in Divine 83 in Floresville looking at the rest of your weekend so tomorrow Tomorrow morning there is going to be light rain in the early morning hours scattered light rain but much like today moving out by the mid morning hours and a high of 81 so two relatively cooler days here for us over the weekend and then looking ahead to the week it's going to be pretty warm and humid ties are going to warm up to about 90 degrees by Wednesday and Thursday. However, it could be a lot worse. Remember this time last year we were dealing with our first like 100 degree days of yeah. the year and we ended up having 58 100 degree <laughs> days last year. And so it is nice to see that even though it's going to be warm and humid, it's not going to be as bad as it could be. I'll take the rain and 80 degrees any day over 100. Absolutely. And coming up at 8, I'm hoping to share some more of your pictures and videos from last night's light show. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 650, 67 degrees. Just ahead, San Antonio FC wrapping up this weekend's road trip as they head to Detroit. A look at the standings and what inspired their high-powered fence so far. Welcome back. High school baseball playoffs continue. Class 5, a third round action. NEISD Sports Park. Smithson Valley taking on Bernie Champion. Chargers taking game one Thursday night, 4-1. to So Rangers face an elimination. How about the wrestling legend, Bill Goldberg, taking in the stands? Look at that. Cheering for champion. It's champion fan. Who isn't? All right, Chargers taking control on the top of the first. Quinn Grable. Ooh, drop in the shallow center. Cam Logan scores part of a five-run inning. The Chargers loving it. They go 5-0. Rangers, not out of it though. Bottom of the second. Here we go. Jackson Elizondo smoking one deep to the left. Kiss that goodbye. A solo shot making it a 5 2, but champion. They persist, taking it four, 7 to 4, advancing the regional semifinals with a two game sweep. All right, now to Class 6A. O'Connor starting their third round series on the road, taking on Eagle Pass. Top of the fourth, Panthers down 3 0. Charles Dominguez slicing one into center. Tails off from the field, just drops in one run scored. Send the second as the throw comes home and he slides. Is it? Ah! He's safe. Look at that. O'Connor pulls within a run down 3 2, but Eagle Pass responds. We're bottom of the Sith. Oh, Obi Martinez drives in an insurance run with an RBI single to the right. Eagles take game one, 4 2, game two. Don't worry, it's this afternoon. San Antonio FC back in the thick of the USL's Western Conference leaders. 19 points. It's really good enough for third place. Remember, they're the reigning champs. All right. Alamo City Club has scored nine goals in just the last two matches. A loser way. Well, look at that. He's been the heart of it all. Scoring four in that span. Four in two games. That's pretty good if you ask me. Surprised as anyone that he's scoring that easily here. But he's also quick to credit SAFC's style of play. I know that if I'm in these positions to score goals, I'm always going to get a goal. So the way we play and our style of play always it increases my chances of being in these positions of scoring. So I think that's what I'm going to truly like relate it to, like the balls that we play in behind. It's kind of playing to my strengths. So because it's playing to my strengths, it's a lot easier for me to to grab goals. See if we can run it back at two champs in a row. SAFC wrapping up the road trip, taking on Detroit City FC tonight, 6.30 p.m. Detroit currently at the bottom of the Eastern Conference standing. So let's get it going. Run it back. Run it back. <laughs> Time now, 6.56, 67 degrees. Hey, we'll be right back. An unimaginable tragedy. The lives of 19 students and two teachers lost. Look at us. Our lives have been turned upside down. After 12 months, actions to prevent school shootings in Texas have stalled. For our kids, not enough for you to make some kind of change. And the once strong community of Uvalde is beginning to fracture. Wednesday at 9, the search for answers in a community struggling to heal. One year in Uvalde. Wednesday at 9 p.m. on KSAT 12. 
Alrighty, as you can see, rain is moving out of San Antonio. Really, there's only some light showers uh, east of San Antonio, Floresville, Cuero, Yorktown, Kennedy. Now, as we look at the weekend forecast, 20% chance for the rest of the day, only a high of 80. Tomorrow morning, there will be light rain in the early morning hours. Otherwise, it's going to be warm in the week ahead. Temperatures warming up to near 90. We hope you'll join us at 8 for more weather and news. Well, we had a rainy night overnight around San Antonio. Noisy, too. Now, as you can see, much of that rain is moving out, uh, moving toward our coastal communities. We're still eyeing some storms, though, that are in Brackettville area uh, to see if they can hold on, although the atmosphere is pretty worked over. So for the remainder of the day today, we'll be looking at a high right near 80 degrees, only a 20 percent chance for an isolated shower around San Antonio throughout the remainder of the day. Good Saturday morning, everyone. I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. It was a stormy night overnight. A flash flood warning has been allowed to expire out in Medina, Frio, and Atascosa County. And as you can see, the rain is really starting to move out of San Antonio. Just some moderate rain left over for Kennedy, Yorktown, Cuero. Some light rain ongoing in Seguin at the moment. I want to turn your attention to the west because there is some redevelopment out here in Kenny County of some storms. It'll be interesting to see if they can hold on to make it to San Antonio. Antonio, even though the atmosphere is very worked over. Still, though, we will only carry a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm throughout the remainder of the day. We'll have northeast winds and uh, temperatures will only be climbing up to about 80 degrees for the high. Again, a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm, but go out and enjoy your Saturday. Just keep the radar handy with you on your KSAT Weather Authority app uh, or on KSAT.com. I'll have more for you, including your Sunday forecast cast at eight today. There's only a 20% chance for rain. That's after a stormy night overnight and then tomorrow morning light rain, but nice in the afternoon. All in all, the weekend is going to be cooler than average. Our highs will only be near 80 degrees. Live from case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. All right, we are starting off with a live look out of the Alamo City. A gorgeous start to the morning after a loud and bright night, thunder and lightning throughout San Antonio. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments for now. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock. It is Saturday, May 20th. Thank you so much Good for morning. starting your day with us. So you have two dogs. Were they woken oh, up? Terrified. Oh, so therefore, goodness. I was up. I was up, the dogs are up, and they didn't want to go outside. And I'm sure that was a case for a lot of fur babies and just children who don't Absolutely. like those thunderstorms, Sarah. But we're done for most, for most of the day, you would for say? For most of the day. Okay. You can see that there's a bit of development here off to the west, closer to Brackettville. We're going to be watching these carefully to see if they can even make it to San Antonio. If they did so, it would be quite a while before the energy of these storms makes it to the Alamo City, closer to about 2 o'clock this afternoon. Otherwise, you know, all of the rain has moved on off to the east for a good portion of us. So so looking at rain chances for the rest of your day, it's only going to be isolated. Go out, enjoy your Saturday. Just keep a radar handy in case you get one of those isolated storms or showers. Uh, so otherwise, you know, because a cool front has moved through, a lot cooler than yesterday. Yesterday we were at 90. Today we'll be at 80 degrees. Mainly cloudy skies, few peaks of sunshine. We'll have morning light rain for your Sunday as well, but then in the afternoon again, uh, fairly decent. So not a washout there on Sunday as as well. Coming up in the forecast, we'll take a look at the week ahead and I want to show some of your pictures from last night. What a light show we had around San Antonio. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Just into our newsroom, a Bear County Sheriff's Office canine has passed away. So BCSO canine named Fiasco found unresponsive by his handler yesterday afternoon. All of this unfolding at a home in far west Bear County. Fiasco, part of the BCSO Detention Division. He was actually responsible for discovering narcotics and contraband throughout the Bear County Adult Detention Center. The Sheriff's Office says Fiasco services kept both deputies and inmates safe and that they are saddened by his passing. An investigation of Fiasco's death is now ongoing.
Also new this morning, San Antonio police say a woman was taken to the hospital after an overnight crash. It happened just after 930 last night at the Loop 410 entrance ramp near North Van Diver Road. That's on the city's north side near Harry Warsbach. SAPD says the driver in her 20s couldn't decide whether or not to get on the highway. She hit the ramp barrier and spun around, hitting an SUV head on. She was taken to Bamsey with minor injuries and will be tested for possible DWI at the hospital. And the other driver involved was not hurt. Big update on a suspect accused of killing a teenager in a hit and run crash. So take a look. This is 46 year old Greg Gonzalez. He was arrested, charged with failure to stop and render aid resulting in death. Now, these charges stem from a crash that happened around 1030 Sunday night on Calabria Road, not too far from St. Mary's University. Police say 16 year old Draven Espinosa was crossing the street when he was hit by a suburban allegedly driven by Gonzalez. Now we spoke to family and friends of the victim while they are happy an arrest has finally been made, they believe there are more people who should be held accountable. This shouldn't only be him getting incarcerated. It should be everybody else that was in that vehicle because they knew that they hit somebody, but it wasn't just a somebody, it was a kid. He just turned 16, he just had his birthday. Now you've taken his life away. Not only the driver, but the other people in the vehicle. You should have stopped and said something. Family and friends of the victim holding a plate sale this weekend, trying to raise money for funeral costs. If you're interested in that information, how to help out, we have all of it right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, new population estimates released Thursday by the U.S. Census Bureau shows that Texas is now home to four of the nation's largest cities, Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, and Austin. The estimates track population growth from July of 2021 to July of 2022, Texas is the second state to pass a population total of 30 million. California is still first. Well, here at home, today is Teens Day SA. The San Antonio Youth Commission hosting and celebrating brilliance and health of young people across our community. Alyssa Cole joining us live by at the event. This, Alyssa, this opportunity shows teens the resources available to them in San Antonio. Yes, yes, that's exactly what it is. It's the city's way of just bringing those teens in to show them, hey, this is what's available. These are the resources here in your city as you navigate uh, teenagerhood, if you will, and transition into adulthood. Now, here's what we know. It's open to children 12 years old and older. They'll have the opportunity to enjoy, you know, food, fun activities and opportunities to connect with other teens while providing resources and getting those resources from youth organizations organization groups and there's also opportunities for parents too. This is a family uh, friendly event if you will. There will be workshop and resources for parents and guardians. Those looking to find more details out about the workshops what they offer. You can go to our website at ksat.com. It's all listed there but take a look at your screen right now. If this is something you're interested in for your family or maybe you're a teen just catching the morning news right now. Good morning and joining us. The event will be happening at 10 a.m. It'll run until two and it'll be at the Rise Recovery located at 2803 Moss Rock Street. That's not too far from Vance Jackson Road in Loop 410 and it is on the city's north side. So again, if you are interested in learning more about the resources available for teenagers in the city of San Antonio, go to our website at ksat.com and all the details are listed there. But for now, reporting in San Antonio, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. Time now, 8.06, 67 degrees out. A young man on a mission. After the break, how Jalen's challenge is changing the world. His story is next. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City. So we started the morning off with more than 2,200 CPS customers without power. Right now, a little bit less than 600 still being affected by the storms overnight. Looking clear, looking beautiful, looking like it's going to be a great weekend. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Rob Elementary School has a long and significant history here in Uvalde, long before the tragedy of nearly a year ago. There was a contest uh, at the time that the school was being built as to for whom it should be named. The school issue came up, we took advantage of that. My best friend was out there walking and I did not know why. 
I did not understand. People are still coming from everywhere. Those stories and those memories in KSAT Explains, Monday at 6. Studies show one out of four kids are bullied each year. Bullying can destroy a child's confidence, ruin their self-esteem, and leaving, leave them feeling completely alone. So one young man has actually been the voice for the bullied. He's hoping to challenge other kids to step up and help stop the violence. Leslie Hudson has his story. When Jalen Arnold was just a little boy, the tics of Tourette's syndrome started. I roll my eyes, I twitch my eyes, I jerk my neck, and everything's fully, completely involuntary. Diagnosed with Tourette's, Asperger's, and OCD, you could see how it impacted him physically. What you couldn't see, the emotional turmoil Jalen was going through. Kids would call me a, a demon. They would steal my lunch boxes, steal my clothes, break my stuff. I've heard that he was demon possessed, that I should have him put down like a euthanasia, like an animal. So Jalen was ma made to wear a sign at school saying, my name is Jalen Arnold and I have Tourette's syndrome and autism around his neck at school. That's when his mom, Robin, and Jalen said, enough. He said, I want to go tell them kids what they did to me. Jalen faced his bullies and educated his entire classroom on Tourette's. It's some weird thing in your brain that just makes you. And his message caught fire worldwide. I wanted to know what advice do you have for bullies? For some sit down and stop bullying. Jalen's challenge was born. His nonprofit won the Princess Diana Legacy Award, and now at 22, Jalen has told his story to more than 300,000 kids in schools around the country. The number one thing I, I push through and I drive through the heads of our youth is to really speak up. Don't, don't suffer in silence. Every child taking part in Jalen's challenge receives a book glow-in-the-dark wristband and certificate. In return, they actively take part in stopping bullies. Jalen's Challenge has showed me that with the right tools and with the right mindset that you can not only help yourself, but help everyone along the way and they can help other people. And it just becomes one big ripple effect. Proof that one person can make a difference. I knew that if I could speak up and be a voice for kids who felt like they had no voice, that I could change the world eventually with this message. Boy. I'm Leslie Hudson Boy. reporting. We were just talking about that this morning, how, you know, that whole experience in middle school and elementary school can be tough, so it's good to see. Such a good story. Absolutely. Hey, guys, I think we're all a little tired because we didn't <laughs> sleep that much because yeah. of all of the storms that happened last night around San Antonio. I wanted to start with some of your KSAT Connect pictures. This picture, really cool with the American flag there in the foreground oh. and the lightning strike in the background. Uh, this is awesome. Caught this nice lightning strike over in Lakeside on the southeast side. Let's talk about about some rainfall totals in Yvonne's backyard, just under an inch in the Westover Hills area. Wonderful. And then two inches of rain. This is Highway 90 West and Loop 1604. That's on the west side. And again, great pictures there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the radar and see where the rain is right now. All of the widespread heavy rain has moved to the south and to the east of San Antonio and from most of our viewing area too. We do have some light rain showers out in Wilson County, Carnes County, near Quero, Yorktown, moderate rain, Goliad and Victoria. And then I wanna mention that there is some redevelopment out to the west. I'm turning on the radar that's closer to these storms. Now, one thing about these storms is they're moving into an atmosphere that is really worked over from the overnight showers and storms. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can make it to San Antonio or even the metro area at all. As I mentioned, if they do, it would be a while before that energy even makes it to eastern Bear, western Bear County by about lunch and then into the afternoon. So we'll still carry a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm during the day today, but go out enjoy your Saturday it's not going to be a washout by any means I do want to take a moment and talk about how much rain we saw around San Antonio overnight tonight because there really were some very impressive rainfall totals overnight one area that got an absolute 
insane amount of rain was between Hondo and Yancey in uh, in Medina County. Nearly six inches of radar estimated rain. Lytle also experienced some flooding issues, about four inches of radar estimated rain in Lytle and in northern uh, Atascosa County. Anywhere you see these yellows here, like near Petite, Pleasanton, and parts of western Wilson County, that's about two inches of rain. Nearly two inches of rain fell up uh, I-10 towards Seguin between Marion and Seguin. And then a little bit around San Antonio, JBSA Lackland, about two inches of rain up to John Jay High School as well. Memorial High School, about an inch of rain. Leon Valley, an inch to two inches right there on that west side uh, of uh, Highway 90 and 1604. That was nearly two inches. But around the airport, it was a little bit less. Let's take a look at some of these uh, rainfall estimates around the airport. About a couple tenths of an inch of rainfall in Timberwood Park and Bulverde. Sorry, you got a little bit less than a quarter of an inch of rain. So as we look ahead to our forecast for the day, just know again, 20% chance for an isolated downpour throughout the day. It's going to be cooler with northeast winds at about 10 to 15. And so a high only of 80 degrees this afternoon. Comparison yesterday, we were at 90 for the high. And then later on tonight, temperatures will fall into the 70s. It's going to be a mostly cloudy day. Here's a look at those forecast highs. 77 in Kerrville and in Rock Springs, not too bad. 81 in Del Rio, 84 in Catula, 82 in Gonzales. All right, our weather setup cold front moved through. Uh, if you're heading out to Houston today or know friends and family heading along I-10 toward Houston, a little bit more rain than in San Antonio right now. That cooler air working its way in from the north. It's in the 40s in the central plains. We won't be that cool, but we are going to be seeing another day near 80 tomorrow, which is a welcome change. Looking at the future cast, there is a chance for storms west of San Antonio today, but then overnight tonight, uh, it should not be as stormy as it was this last night, so you can rest easy. However, there will be some light rain in the early morning hours tomorrow. Uh, keep that in mind as you're heading out for your Sunday morning activities, whether that's grocery shopping, going to church, etc. Know that it is going to be a little uh, damp out there. Otherwise, taking a look at the seven day forecast in the afternoon tomorrow should be nice. So just a morning light rain, afternoon nice tomorrow, and then warming up near 90 degrees on Wednesday and Thursday. Humidity is going to be high. Coming up, though, I know we've been dodging a lot of showers and storms the last few weeks. It's all good for our aquifer. I'll have those details in a few. And our lawns are loving it. Our native plants yes. are loving it. I haven't seen grass this green in a long time in San Antonio. It's nice. Thank yeah. you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 818, just about 70 degrees. Up next, a new Lego game. Let's players' imaginations run wild with building Lego vehicles Whoa. that can race. We have a first look at the gameplay next. Hello, Bricklandia. I'm Vicki Wheeler. And I'm Parker Carr. Today's top story, you, you driving fast. fast. Lego 2K Drive puts players behind the wheel of a game involving more than racing. Lego 2K Drive is an open world driving adventure. It's not just a racing game. It's uh, much more than just racing. It is a, uh, an experience with Lego and vehicles that travel very, very fast. And your goal within the game is to uh, achieve the coveted Sky Trophy, which everybody in Bricklandia is after. We do have a bit of a mad scientist laboratory going on in the garage. So whatever you build, it takes on the uh, physics of the construction that you apply, right? So if you build something that's very tall, it's going to, you're going to feel that height when you drive throughout Bricklandia. The game's creative director has this advice for players. So you should get good at drifting from the very beginning in the game. Drifting is the foundation of being good at LEGO 2K Drive. It's very simple. You hold down the gas, you go fast, you hold down the brake, and then you steer left and right. And it's as easy as that, and it feels great. Learning to drift is way cooler than learning to parallel park. <laughs> Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella.
All right, time now, 823, just about 70 degrees. Hey, before we head to break, we want to wish Aww. MJ. She is our GMSA weekend editor extraordinaire. We love MJ. She's going to be making a transition to being in a producer role soon. Happy birthday, MJ. Oh, she is on vacation too. this week, so we hope you're having a great time. Good morning and welcome back. All right, so do you like Dr. Pepper? Yes. Do you like ice cream? Yes. Would you like Dr. Pepper ice cream? Absolutely. All right, Dr. <laughs> Pepper and Bluebell Creameries teaming up for a creative Dr. Pepper float ice cream. Okay, so the new ice cream, which mixes vanilla ice cream with Dr. Pepper flavored sherbet, is available at stores where Bluebell is sold. So that includes HEB, I'm assuming. Dr. Pepper and Bluebell both have roots in Texas, founded in Waco in 1885. Dr. Pepper was the first in a wave of 19th century upstart soda companies. I've been to the museum there. Okay. It's very cool. Well, Bluebell launched in 1807 by a group of businessmen who making butter from excess cream from area farms. So there you go. Butter, Dr. Pepper, what powers combined. I mean, I think that we need to talk to the producers and try some of this live. Yeah. Oh, it looks so good. You have to give like your actual reaction. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the scenes, the actual reactions are much better than the... Oh, well, you know how honest I am. Oh, this tastes great. <laughs> Time now, 827, just about 70 degrees. Still ahead, a special graduation happening this weekend for one local family that has been waiting more than 20 years for it to happen. We'll tell you about the graduate and what this means to his family. Good morning, welcome back. Happy weekend, 831 this morning. It is Saturday, it is May 20th, and usually it's April showers bring May flowers, but I think here in Texas it's May, May showers bring June keep, flowers. Keep bringing on those May flowers, <laughs> Sarah, and we're pretty much done for the day with those thunderstorms. Yeah, for the most part, Sarah, that's exactly right. The sh main area of showers and storms has moved well east of San Antonio. As we take a look at Transguide, though, there are still some slick spots on the road, uh, so just be careful. This is 281 at San Pedro. Look at that green grass. That looks really nice out there to be able to see a really healthy plant life for the first time in a long time around San Antonio. Take a look at the live radar. Again, the main area of rain has moved east. There is one area of thunderstorms moving into Yavaldi County. This is just run of the mill thunder, lightning, brief heavy downpour south of Yavaldi. We're going to watch this carefully to see if the energy can produce any showers and storms closer to San Antonio later on this this afternoon. Otherwise, it's going to be a fairly quiet day. Unfortunately, the rain is a good thing, but it does make the molds go up. Molds are very high today, past 13,000. Grass is also present, but pretty low at only 10. It's the molds that are really causing the issues for allergy uh, allergens out there today. Looking ahead to the, the day, cloudy until noon, then we'll see some peaks of sunshine and here's the thing winds are going to be in the northeast today up 5 to 15 miles per hour so a little bit of a breeze high of only 80 and once again there's only a 20 percent chance for an isolated shower or storm today so keep that in mind as you're planning your day should be pretty nice for any kind of outdoor activities otherwise we do have a chance for rain tomorrow morning as well but the timing of it should work out for uh, your sunday plans details in a few sarah max Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, one man is in the hospital fighting for his life after being shot seven times on the city's northwest side. San Antonio police say a group of people were hanging out at a pool at the Legacy Flats apartments. That's on Shanefield. When someone ran up on them, allegedly, and fired several shots, one man was hit seven times, taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Another was shot in the leg. Police are still searching for that shooter. Well, new this morning, big update to a story we first told you about yesterday. A 19-year-old man involved in an hours-long standoff with San Antonio police finally surrendering overnight. Right now, still waiting for SAPD to release the suspect's name, but this is what we know. SAPD was called to the area near Westfield and West Oaks Roads. This is on the west side. They were called for a response to an assault on Friday afternoon. Police say that the suspect held his young children in the home before finally releasing one of them. Family members telling investigators the man had assaulted his mother and barricaded himself inside the home with a nine-month-old and a one-year-old child, all while being armed with two knives. Eventually, the man was taken into custody just after 11 p.m. last night, and we now know this morning both children are safe and unharmed. 
It's National Bike Month and Friday was National Bike to Work Day. It's a time where many should be encouraged at the road on two wheels, but instead, a troubling trend has cycling advocates asking for more protection on the roads. In the past 22 days, there have been at least six hit and runs and five were deadly. The lone survivor is currently in critical condition. All victims were either on a bike or walking. That's why Activate SA executive Joey Pollack tells us with the city growing in population and more vehicles on the road, he'd like to see more done for people on bikes. Incredibly proud of the city for you know making the efforts in building out 100 plus miles of Greenway trails, but that's like the wheel and we need some spokes in between to connect. If we make roadways safer for cyclists and pedestrians, we'll make it safer for drivers too. We have emailed San Antonio police to get stats on how many motor vehicle pedestrian cyclist crashes we have had this year and how that compares to last year. They told us they're working on it and as soon as we get it, we'll share it with you. And a Brittany Griner returning to the WNBA court for the first official game in 579 days. And remember, this is in the aftermath of spending 10 months in a Russian prison. Wow, here's ABC's Zareen Shaw with all the highlights from the season opener. It was a moment in sports history, a standing ovation, a thunderous applause, and a crowd bursting with cheers inside a packed Crypto.com arena, marking Brittany Griner's return to the WNBA after her imprisonment in Russia. Uh, the love from you know the fans when I came out was amazing. Uh, the players, uh, you know, I, I, I definitely feel it. The vice president at the game to show her support. Over to Griner with the elbow jump shot and she rattles down her first field goal attempt. Griner showing up on the court, sinking basket after basket for a total of 18 points. Her efforts not enough to secure a win. After the game, Griner talking about the new meaning standing for the national anthem now has for her. You know, I was literally in a cage and could not stand the way I wanted to. Just being able to hear my my national anthem, see my flag. She's one of the top players in women's basketball and more familiar with a different kind of court this past year, pleading for her freedom to a judge after she was wrongfully detained in Russia last year in February for carrying vape cartridges, carrying cannabis oil. The WNBA keeping her story alive during those uncertain 10 months putting her initials BG on all WNBA courts. The White House eventually negotiated a high-level prisoner swap to secure Griner's release. After the game, Griner expressing gratitude to the basketball community. I appreciate everything a little bit more. Just appreciating everything because, you know, tomorrow's not guaranteed. So as for tomorrow, Griner will be back on the court when the Phoenix Mercury take on the Chicago Sky. And it all starts at 4 Eastern right on ESPN. And hopefully her team has better luck. Zorin Shaw, ABC News, Los Angeles. Debt ceiling talks in Washington resumed briefly after being put on pause Friday afternoon. Negotiations broke down Friday after a short meeting at the Capitol. Republican House lead negotiator Representative Garrett Graves described the situation as a pressing pause. Later Friday, Speaker Kevin McCarthy told Fox Business that the negotiating team would be back in the room tonight. The White House remains optimistic that a bipartisan agreement is still possible. Well, it is the first, not exactly unexpected, maybe not the last. The Montana governor signing a bill this week that bans TikTok in his state. So the social media app has been prohibited for state business in Montana since last year. A lot of states have done that. But this new bill, now law, forbids it from being offered on mobile app stores to any users in the state, state of Montana. As for how he can possibly enforce this law, it's a big question. A TikTok spokesperson says even the bill's champions admit there's really no feasible way to do that. That didn't stop the governor. He wanted to amend the bill to expand the ban to any social media platform that sends user data to a foreign adversary. The legislative cycle in Montana ended before the amendment could be considered. And already, TikTok users have filed a suit alleging that this law is unconstitutional. Well, back here at home, a lifeguard shortage really affecting community pools across the country. That's right. In an effort to fill the gap here, two cities are hosting summer job fairs today. Alyssa Cole joins us outside of the Ramon V. Quintero Community Center with more details about those job fairs. Good morning, Alyssa. 
Yes, good morning, you all. I'm standing outside of this community center because one of the job fairs I'm going to tell you about will be happening here at 10 o'clock. But in regards to that shortage that you mentioned, Max, this is an ongoing issue. And we know the job duties of a lifeguard is extremely important when it comes to the safety of others. When we got a chance to talk to city officials, they say one of the issues they're having to fill these roles is there's just not enough people applying. And at least that was the case leading up to this summer. Now, we know know one of the consequences when it comes to the lack of lifeguards. It's the possibility of the city cutting some pool hours or keeping some pool locations closed. It's also important to know cities are also looking to fill other summer temporary jobs, including community service specialists, recreation specialists, and recreation instructors and assistants as well. And pool supervisors, outdoor pool supervisors. Take a look at the information on your screen right now. If you're interested, there are two job fairs you and your family can visit today. Starting at 10 o'clock, the city of San Antonio will host their city summer job fair at the Ramon Quintero Community Center here at the Southside Lions Park on 3100. Hiawatha, Hiawatha, excuse me, street. This starts at 10 a.m. and it runs until 2. The second job fair, uh, if you live northeast or if you live near or in New Braunfels, they're also having their summer job fair today as well. And that runs from 9 until 12. And it's at the Landa House at 360 Aquatic Circle. Now, for those of you considering attending the San Antonio job fair, we're told the pay range is between 17 and $20 an hour and those who are selected for lifeguard or outdoor pool supervisor positions, they'll be eligible for a $500 incentive and a $75 swimsuit reimbursement. And just before the live shot next era, we got a chance to talk to some folks here at the community center. And they say those looking to come out to the job fair today, they're in luck because the pool is actually open. So anybody looking to show their lifeguard uh, certification qualifying skills as far as swimming, um, the test that's required to become a lifeguard, today is the day that you can come and you can show the hiring managers your skills. So all you have to do is just bring your swimsuit and bring a pen so you can fill out an application and you can be on your way. I'll send it back to you all. All right, Alyssa Cole, thank you so much. Time is 841, just about 70 degrees. Just ahead, the family of a man who died 20 years ago celebrating his graduation this weekend at UTSA. The remarkable 20-year journey to honor him, that's next. And Alyssa said if you're going to apply to be a lifeguard, bring the swimsuit, the pool is open. Will the showers stay away for the rest of the day? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. One year ago, we promised to be here to keep pressing for answers and to always remember the victims of Uvalde. We shared the family's stories. We heard their voices. And in many cases, we shared their grief. KSAT 12's continued promise takes you back inside the community and the inner struggles that many in Uvalde continue to face. One year in Uvalde, a KSAT 12 news special, Wednesday at 9. A photo shows the last time Paul Mayfield wore a cap and gown as a high school graduate decades ago. Now, there are graduation vibes in the air again. I'm so excited that my brother's gonna be getting his bachelor's degree. I'm just so very happy that this is happening. His family is overjoyed, and they know Paul would be too. He died in 2003, before he could finish his coursework in interdisciplinary studies at UTSA. I wrote a letter to the university uh, president of UTSA. And I just said, I pro you probably don't get this request every day, but could you give my brother a degree? To her surprise, the school readily agreed to the posthumous award. His family believes it's an honor for a life well lived. See the sun shining, like I definitely feel his presence. Well, he was so smart too. He just, he just cared about people. He was always there for you if you needed him. The siblings feel it's a way to celebrate Paul's memory and uphold a value instilled in them by their parents. And the idea that education was a way to transcend and go to a next level of living. In our core nuclear family, between mommy and daddy, all eight kids, we have 19 college degrees. Paul had been the only sibling without one, but that all changes after Saturday's ceremony. 
family will be in the stands and on stage. Yeah, I'm honored to be able to attend his, his graduation. Getting up and getting dressed and getting there and walking the stage for my uncle, that does mean a lot to me. Although this degree has been 20 years in the making, Janice quickly figured out what she's going to do with the diploma. She has a spot picked out on this wall right here next to the others. He would be like, wow, you did this? You know, is this real? Because <laughs> it's really unbelievable and pretty incredible. For the family, it's a dream finally fulfilled. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Great story by Katrina Weber. You can check it out right now. Just head to KSAT.com. A lot of people on the website this morning trying to figure out when the showers are going to go away. Absolutely. And the showers have moved out of San Antonio, although there is one area that I'm watching to see if they can make it to San Antonio. All okay. in all, though, the chance for rain rest of the day is about 20%, so fairly isolated. This weather pattern has been a big change from what we've been dealing with the last I'll take years. it. Absolutely. And you know what? The aquifer is loving it, too. I'm going to show you here the Edwards Aquifer in the pink and the purple. That's the contributing zone and the recharge zone. That's where the rain needs to fall in order to get into the aquifer. And in just the past seven days, look how much rain has fallen on those areas of the aquifer. In some spots, up to about three to four inches of rain especially in Kerr County there. The aquifer itself is actually up 12 and a half feet over the past 20 uh, over the past uh, several weeks since mid April. We've been able to see that change there for us. Take a look at the live radar. Things are relatively quiet right now around San Antonio. There's that area out to the west that we need to monitor to see if the energy can make it to the Alamo City. Take a look around uh, Uvalde right now. That's where we've got the showers moving into Uvalde County. The heaviest of the storms south uh, of Uvalde near to Smythe Crossing there. Uh, plenty of flashes of lightning uh, associated with this, but that's about it. There's no severe weather here for us or moving through Uvalde. So that's some good news there. And notice that as these storms move to the east, they're kind of weakening quite a bit. So the question is, will they make it to San Antonio? Will they or won't they? If they do, if they can hold together, they would make it. The energy, at least from this storm system, would make it to western Bear County by about noon. Otherwise, again, only a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm. Take a look at that KSAT 12-hour forecast for you. Again, 20% chance. Temperatures are going to stay in the low 70s uh, throughout the next couple of hours. But by about noon, we'll be at 77. We'll see some sun and take a look at the high temperature later on today. 80 degrees. That's it. That's an improvement from yesterday when our high was 90. Neighborhood view. Average high this time of year is 88. So it's going to be 78 in Bernie, 78 in Holotus, 82 in Castroville, 81 in Seguin, 83 in Nixon, 77 in Kerrville, and 78 in Comfort. Take a look at your weekend. So again, only a 20% chance for the rest of the day. High of 80. Tomorrow morning. There is going to be some light rain. Now, we are not going to have storminess overnight like we did last night, so you'll be able to rest easy tonight. But tomorrow, early in the morning hours, as you're getting ready uh, for your Sunday morning activities, know that there is going to be some light rain. That'll linger until at least probably the mid-morning hours, potentially through lunch. Otherwise, it's going to be nicer in the afternoon with a high right near 81. And you can see that in the future cast here. This is a look at tomorrow. Tomorrow morning in the pre dawn hours, some light rain there. And then by about 10, things are going to clear out. And into the afternoon, we'll see peaks of sunshine and again a high of 81. So, looking at those rain chances after tomorrow morning, you know, we're really going to be able to see things dry out for a while around San Antonio. Uh, it's going to be in the upper 80s and near 90 degrees by Wednesday and Thursday. Coming up after the break, we'll have more news. See you then. All right, an ultra creepy sculpture commanded a high price, I'm not going to say the words in the script, a very <laughs> high price at an auction this week. So a buyer paid $32.8 million. I have to see this statue. It's a 10 foot tall bronze spider. Let's take a look. So crafted in 1996 by a French American artist, the sculpture is part of a series huh. which can be seen at some of the world's most prominent art museums. The artist didn't start sculpting spiders until she was in her 80s. Wow, she passed away in 2010 
at 98 years old. Okay. 33 million. I want to go back to the, the price of this. Yeah. Some people just have too much money and not enough time. <sighs> yeah. I, look, I'm not an, an art guy. <laughs> However, <Obviously. laughs> if I had $33 million. You wouldn't spend it on a giant spider? I, it doesn't even really look like a spider, which is like one of my biggest gripes to this. Well, it's art. Nice. Sarah Spivey has one of them in her new front yard. No, I don't. <laughs> Time now, just about 8.56, 69 degrees. We'll be right back. The very first Chick-fil-A is closing today. Oh, no. We now have a Chick-fil-A here in downtown San Antonio. It's very exciting. Nice. The line was like around the, regardless. Yeah. So the restaurant <laughs> in Atlanta's Greenbrier Mall first opened in 1967. It is considered a pioneer in mall dining. Absolutely. It led to the creation of the modern day food court. Chick-fil-A has not given a reason why the location is closing for good. Like many malls, Greenbrier has been struggling. It currently has no major anchor tenants. Meanwhile, Chick-fil-A has about 2,600 locations across the country. I chick fil yesterday. Pantel, what'd you get? Uh, the grilled nuggets. Oh, you have to. I have. See, you got the grilled. I would have gotten like the regular nuggets, mm -hmm. but... I get the. I go for yeah, the yeah, waffle yeah. fries and all the dips. Eat the waffle fries. Mm -hmm. All right, my mouth is watering. <laughs> Time now, just about 8.59, 70 degrees. Still ahead at 9, we're celebrating National Barbecue Month with David Elder, and he's checking out some of the best bites around town on Texas Eats. See, we went from Chick-fil-A to ribs. What could go wrong? All right, here you go. Yeah, okay, so summer is almost here, but that doesn't mean your water bill has to rise with the heat. How a SAWS program can help you get water-saving plants for your yard. You don't want to miss that story. It's coming up.